Hello everybody and welcome to the official opening of the new Class UK and Mans facilities here at Saxon in sunny Suffolk. My name is Trevor Tyrrell and together with my colleagues in Class UK, we've been looking forward to this event ever since we started planning way back in 2013. It's been a long seven year journey, but it only serves to make today all the more special. It's really a shame that you couldn't all be here in person, but today is the new normal and we're determined to make the most of it. Holding this event virtually does mean that we've been able to invite a lot more people. And today there are over 500 of you watching this live stream, including members of parliament, local VIPs and dignitaries, college and university principals, neighboring businesses, trade suppliers, our class dealers from all over the UK and Ireland, class colleagues from all around the world, our pensioners, our employee councillors, and many, many other very special guests. So a huge welcome to each and every one of you. Our most distant guests are watching today from Omaha, Nebraska, from Moscow in Russia, and from the other side of the world in Melbourne, Australia, and Christchurch, New Zealand, where it's nearly tomorrow already. So a special welcome to our global audience. If anyone has any questions today, please feel free to ask them in the chat box and one of our Class UK directors will respond. So over the course of the next 50 minutes or so, we're going to show you all around the 20 acres or eight hectares of our site and demonstrate how we've improved the experience for customers and visitors to Saxon. We'll be taking a little video journey into the past and we'll also be taking a glimpse into the future. To help us, we have several class VIPs joining us. First of all, I'm delighted to introduce the chairwoman of the supervisory board of class, Katrina Class Mulhäuser. Katrina will be talking to us later and performing the ceremonial ribbon cutting for our official opening ceremony. Our second VIP today is Thomas Buck, chief executive of the class group. Thomas will be joining us live from Germany and he'll be telling us how the agricultural industry and class have performed over the past year. Live here in our Technopark, we have our Class UK board members, and I'd now like to introduce them to you. First up is Jeremy Wiggins, our Chief Customer Officer. Next is Brian Wayne, our Chief Operating Officer. Then it's Oliver Holscher, our new Chief Financial Officer. And finally, it's Richard Vaughan, our Retail Director. Yes, Richard, it definitely looks better with the mask up. Thank you. These four gentlemen <clears throat> will be your news correspondents today, reporting in from all different parts of our new site, explaining what and how our business is changing. We'd also like to introduce our project leader for our redevelopment project. He's our outgoing chief financial officer, and he's now the senior vice president for Middle Europe, Thomas Spearing. Unfortunately, Thomas couldn't travel today because of COVID restrictions, but we would like to say a huge thank you to Thomas and to Richard Vaughan and Paul Butcher for all the hard work the three of you have put into this project. We couldn't have done it without you. And I'd also like to say a thank you to all the other people who made this amazing new building possible. David Masters and his team at BCR Infinity Architects, Aaron, Mark and Tim, our chartered surveyors at Oxbury & Co, our building contractors, RG Carter Limited, and all of their subcontractors. Our graphic designers, Lena at Strongpoint and Neil at G-Science. And the many, many other people, both inside the business and externally, who were involved creating this fantastic new facility. And finally, a special thank you to our employees who have worked so hard to make sure our daily business wasn't disrupted during the chaos of the demolition and rebuilding over the past six years. Now I think we can go live to Germany where our CEO Thomas Bock is at the class headquarters in Harzewinkel. Hello Thomas, how are you? Hello Trevor, hello everybody. I'm doing great, how about you? Yeah, perfect, uh, thank you Thomas and thank you for joining us for our official opening. I'd like to begin Thomas, if I may, by asking you how the agricultural industry has performed during the COVID crisis. Yeah, farming business is has proven quite uh, to be quite resilient. So even, even the weather conditions didn't uh, really affect uh, the, the business of the farmers. Of course, there were ups and downs. If you compare, for example, the farmers 
supplying hospitality or the travel industry, but others that they are uh, self-selling to the direct end customer or uh, supplying supermarkets have done a great job and, and have proven to be very well uh, off also in that kind of season. That's great. And Thomas, tell us, how have class performed over the past 12 months or so? Yeah, we, we have seen a similar picture also for class. Uh, but I can tell you we have done very well and you will see it uh, by our annual press conference by the end of this year. So it was a very good year. And uh, if you look, for example, to UK and Ireland, it, despite the, the severe weather conditions in, in winter and spring, uh, still you did recover. But uh, we have other regions like, for example, North America, Eastern Europe, Australia. They really outperformed uh, the market. So overall, it was a growth market for us and uh, we have been doing quite good. Oh, well, that sounds very positive, Thomas. And we're certainly looking forward to your financial press conference in December. Now, you look like you're standing in the class greenhouse today. And I'm sure our guests will be interested to know what the greenhouse is and what you're doing in there. Are you growing tomatoes and cucumbers or something? <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, we, are, we are in harvesting business, not, not in, in, in tomatoes. But here we grow ideas and we nurture them. So we are developing IT solutions, software ideas, uh, new services especially uh, the new dealer management system, uh, which is going live next week in, cl uh, in Class Eastern in UK uh, for, for the market to support the dealers in operating uh, better also the market. And what we also develop in here is uh, the Class Salesforce uh, CRM system, which will be going live next year in, in UK and France. So this is a big step also in treating the customer better and, and supporting with everything we have. So this is developed here and we have a lot of teams uh, going in and out and, and creating new ideas for the class group and the customers. Well, Thomas, the building I'm standing in today looks a little bit like a greenhouse as well. And I know how much you and everybody else watching were looking forward to seeing around our new facility. So would you now like a short video tour of our new techno park and our restaurant? Absolutely. So I've heard uh, that you have done a lot uh, to improve the customer experience. Could you show it to me? Of course, Thomas. Now, we have, in fact, here two new technoparks, one for harvesting products and one for tractors. These technoparks are our ex exhibition stands of the future. So instead of attending a national show for just one or two days a year, we will be open here at Saxon all year round for customers to come and visit and see our latest high-tech machinery. We have cutaway modules and operator interfaces such as CBIS and CMOS from our class tractors. And our smart farming platforms such as telematics can be tested on large screen displays. Come and see your machine working live on a big screen. Visitors will be able to dine in our new Seasons restaurant where they can enjoy locally sourced food, freshly cooked every day. The menu changes with the seasons reflecting local farm supplies. Customers can enjoy a delicious cappuccino, latte, or espresso. And in the spring and summer, they'll be able to dine al fresco on our fabulous new terrace. The conference center is right next to the restaurant. We can seat up to 100 visitors. And of course, we have the latest video conference facilities. We have beautiful landscape views on every floor that remind us of harvest all year round. Our modern environment is very conducive to our recruitment and employee well-being. We've brought the outside in, and customers can see our machines in action from wherever they are in the building. Amazing. So, so it's really outstanding what you have achieved. But I heard you also did a lot in, in improving sustainability, which is also of high importance for our customers. Can you tell me about that? Sure, Thomas. We have a great environmental story to tell. For example, all of the electricity we use on site, including the heating in our Technopark, comes from an AD or biogas plant on the farm right next door. And some of the crops that Farmer George turns into electricity are grown on the Class family farm nearby. So Class really are fully integrated into the local supply chain. We've installed electric charging points for our hybrid and electric cars and they are powered by a large array of solar panels on the roof of this very building that I'm standing in today. 
Finally, all the used machines that come into Mounds of Saxon were washed and valeted using water we harvest from the roof of the new building. And of course, all the buildings are fully insulated to modern standards. So we'll save money on heat and power, and we're utilizing resources, uh, renewable resources and sustainable resources. So Trevor, that's a great statement and I think it shows really that we care and together with our customers we want to grow and, and we invite everybody to, to your site and really I'm, I'm a little bit depressed that I cannot be with you but as soon as possible, uh, when, when travel constrictions allow, I will be with you uh, visiting the site and also trying to meet customers. So thank you all and goodbye for now. All the best and have a good season. Uh, thank you Thomas. Now we'd like to show you around the rest of our site. And let's start by flying over to our used machinery center, the UMC, where Jeremy's going to tell us all about the very first step in our new building project way back in 2014. Hello, Jeremy. Thank you, Trevor. Behind me is the used machinery center, or UMC, which was built in 2014. And it was the first step of the Saxon rebuild project. The official opening was on the 7th of October of that year with the Mayor of St Edmundsbury, Councillor Robert Everett, joining Jan Hendrik Moore, the CEO of our Sales and Service Business Unit, to cut the ribbon. So why was the UMC the first step in our redevelopment? The reason was to provide Mans of Saxon with a temporary home whilst we demolished their old buildings, and so we saved the cost of having any temporary offices. Whilst today the building is used to store and display the used machinery of all seven branches of Mans, the building was originally designed with four different uses in mind. Firstly, the main purpose is obvious. As I've said, it's the Mans Used Machinery Centre. And in this photo, you can see one of the many successful used machinery events that Mans have held in the past few years. Since we opened in 2014, Mans have sold over £50 million worth of machinery from this building. An incredible achievement. Secondly, we designed the building with large doors on the south side so we can create an arena on the inside. And this allows us to hold our annual Class UK product launches here. Since 2014, we have launched a number of important new products here, such as the new Lexian 8000 series combines last year and the Axian 900 TT tractor. The third purpose of the building was to provide a temporary home for the MAN sales team, whilst their new offices were being built in phase one of the main building. Last but not least, we used the space as a temporary parts store for our larger, bulkier parts, which we previously stored in some outlying buildings and had to be demolished early. This really helped to keep the parts dry and maintain the service to our customers. Thank you, Trevor. Back to you in the Technopark. Thanks a lot, Jeremy. But tell me, have you got any other ideas for ways to develop that particular part of our site? Yes, Trevor, we do have some exciting plans for the future, so let me explain. With our brand new facility at Saxon, I wanted to add to the customer experience. Any customer can come to Saxon, see our parts warehouse, our academy, and to view our machines in the Technopark, but they can't drive them. As we grow our business, I want to give more customers new to class an opportunity to experience our products at times of the year when they're not busy themselves in the field. Many long-standing class customers vividly remember their trips to the factory at Haasewinkel in Germany and they always mention the highlight being the experience we give them driving the machines at Lerman's Farm. Behind me you can see the foundations of our new customer experience centre, primarily focused on our tractor, telehandlers, wheeled loaders and easy products. This all-weather facility allows us to give us a machine experience of oh, any time of the year whenever a customer comes to visit at Saxon. The centre comprises of three elements. The outside track that we call our C-Matic track will allow customers to drive our tractors and experience our automatic CVT gearboxes in the comfort of a fully suspended cab, towing trailers and driving over the obstacles. Secondly, we have two material handling areas. Firstly, to simulate filling a silage clamp using chipped rubber, making it weatherproof. And secondly, a rehandling area using sand to simulate a loading grain lorry with either a, a telehandler or tractor and loader. The last element will be a sand field in the arena where we can demonstrate our automatic steering systems, highlighting the accuracy with the visible footprints of the tractor within the sand. We hope to complement the class experience which has been so successful at Haasewinkel and Le Mans and give this new local class experience to a wider customer audience, especially tractor operators who wouldn't normally experience it. I hope to see you all soon to experience class here at the Experience Centre and I will now hand back over to Trevor. Jeremy, that's looking really fantastic there, what you've done, and thank you very much. 
But it wasn't only mounds of Saxon that we had to move out to make space for the first part of the demolition. We also had to move our training team from our academy. So now we're going to fly over to our new academy where our Chief Operating Officer Brian Wayne will tell us all about the second development on our site, our new regional academy for the UK and Ireland. Hello Brian. Thanks TT and hello everybody. Training our dealers, customers is one of the most important functions of a sales company. Unless every service engineer, parts person and salesman is fully trained on our complete range of products, the cost to the customer increases exponentially because of the repairs and the maintenance take longer and they lose valuable time in the field. Bill Mann recognised the importance of training and he set out his first training school right here at Saxon as early as 1955. Over the years the training school grew larger and larger and with the advent of Class Tractor in 2004 we took on the responsibility to provide training for every employee in our dealerships on our new long line of products. And so the Academy was born. To create our new Academy, we refurbished an existing building that was originally erected in 1964. And this was in fact the last building to be built on this site until the UMC was constructed in 2014. Many of you will remember the official opening on the 4th of October 2017 by our then Speaker of the Executive Board of Class, Lothar Critson, and the Mayor of St Edmundsbury with all our dealers and Academy suppliers. Since then, we have provided over 9,000 man days of training for our customers and dealer employees, on top of a maximum capacity of 4,000 training days per year, we also manage from here, the 80 service and parts apprentices who spend three years on block release at college and then one final year with us before we host them and their families for a special graduation ceremony right here in our academy. We provide training courses from September to July each year and not only face-to-face -face training, we have professional video facilities to provide both e-learning and virtual classrooms. This modern technology has allowed us to continue to provide online learning to our dealers and customers over the past nine months as the coronavirus lockdown forced us to close our doors. Inside the academy, we have a total of five workshops, two for tractors and telehandlers, two for harvesting machines and one for engines. Each workshop has a corresponding classroom with linked presentation screens to maximise the learning experience we are trying to split the training time 80% in the workshop and just 20% in the classroom. Operators are treated to a full day in our academy, learning how to get the most out of their new machines and with many cutaways and remote controls, they get to experience exactly how all the components and their functions on the machines operate. We have plans to grow our academy even further into the future. So everyone who has joined us today is invited to visit us in the years to come and to see how we plan to provide an even greater number of fully trained service engineers for our increasingly complex range of products. Back to you Trev in the Techno Park. Thank you Brian. And now ladies and gentlemen, time for something a little different. We're going to slow things right down, so sit back, relax and turn up the volume. This next short video clip is in honour of Bill Mann, who together with his father Jim started J Mann and Son nearly 100 years ago. Bill was full of ambition and he was a great visionary. He was one of the first people in the industry to provide in-field service using service vans such as this little beauty, who we've christened Vera. Vera is a 1950s Fordson 10 hundred weight or half ton van and is named in memory of Bill Mann's wife, Vera, or V as she was better known. Our Vera is the perfect recreation of the first ever class service van that Bill Mann branded exactly like this in 1948. Our video is called Mann's A Journey Through Time. And the young Bill is played by his grandnephew Tom. And a slightly older Bill is played by Tom's father, Jim.
Well, I'm sure that brought a tear to the eye of many of our pensioners watching today. And if you enjoyed the photos in that video, then you're sure to enjoy the book that we've published called A Harvesting Heritage, Class and Mans. The book was written by two of our ex-employees, Alistair Tullock and the late Ted Kidd. And it charts the history of Mans of Saxon from the very beginning at Honey Hill Farm right up to today. To encourage you to come and visit us here at Saxon, our book is only available from the class shop in our Technopark. Why don't you come and visit and meet Vera at the same time? Now I would like to introduce you to Christian Radons. Christian is the CEO for the class service and sales business worldwide. And he will explain the reasons behind our investment here at Saxon. Now I also know that Christian has secretly fallen in love with Vera and he'd love to have been here today to have a drive in her. So Christian, I'm gonna throw you the keys so that the next time you visit, you can take Vera for a little drive. Thanks Trevor, fastest key ever entered the European Union coming from UK. And I'm looking forward to my test drive uh, when I'm in the UK next time. Thanks for the invitation. Now let's get a little bit more serious. Many people have asked me in the course of the last years, why is Class investing so much money into our UK and Ireland business at Sexem with Brexit just around the corner? And I think it's a fair question. Please let me explain why staying here in front of our little museum in Hasewinkel with a little view in the rear mirror of history. When Bill Mann of Men of Sexem started selling class combines in 1947, the business grew very quickly during the late 40s and 50s. Bill Mann was a great businessman, a true gentleman, but also a farmer. And in true farming style, Scottish, he purchased three second-hand aircraft hangars from a redundant airfield in nearby Market Harborough. After these aircraft hangars had contributed a big deal to the liberation of Europe, a second, much more peaceful and refined use was found for them. Fast forward 50 years now to 2010, the business is now owned by Class, and split in between the Class UK as our wholesaler and Mens as our local dealer. Nevertheless, these old hangars were still in place at Sexham, but they had definitely overstayed their welcome. More than half of our employees were working in them, and the conditions were not at all optimal or meeting certain standards. It was dark, it was cold, and it was expensive to heat. They were long overdue for replacement. At the same time, Class UK and Men's were needing more and more apprentices and service engineers to cope with their rapidly expanding class tractor business. Now can you imagine bringing your 16-year-old daughter or son to check out where they would start their working career and to be faced with these outdated facilities? I could not. The class brand was also developing alongside our tractor business and every dealer was expecting to invest in rebranding and modernizing their premises. Normally, if the manufacturer, if a company like ours owns the largest dealership in the country, you would expect it to be a lighthouse for all dealers as an example for others to follow. The old buildings at Sexem definitely did not fit our vision of the class brand. And our lighthouse was not the shining star that a customer or dealer would expect to see from us. It was simply not class-like. And so the idea was born to redevelop the entire site. The vision was to create a modern facility to take the business forward for the next 100 years and to meet the expectation not just of the farmer today, but of all farmers in the future. Rebuilding on the existing site without disrupting the business required a complex plan. And the team at Sexem did a great job to maintain their usual high values, uh, high levels of customer satisfaction without compromising the excellent service level on any day. Today, 
we are pleased to be able to show you all the results of the effort. A brand new campus style development incorporating the Youth Machine Center, the Academy, new workshops, new offices, a brand new parts warehouse matching all of today's standards for all customers in UK and Ireland. And finally, and this is really, really brand new, our customer experience center incorporating the Techno Park, the field training, and the demonstration area. And all this wrapped up to the class green brand shining like a beacon into the future. Our vision and our brand values all concentrated in one powerful venue. I would like to take the time and the occasion to thank everybody in class, in class UK, and MENS who were involved in the planning, designing, and implementation for developing such a fantastic project. On time, on cost, on quality. Really well done. Now, they started seven years ago in 2013, so it has been a really long but very successful journey. But Trevor, don't make a mistake about it. I can now tell you that the Class UK and men's teams have no excuses whatsoever for not reaching all of your ambitious sales targets. And you know that. Thank you for listening. And now back to you in the Technopart XXM. See you soon. Thank you, Christian. Christian referred a number of times to the importance of apprentices and service mechanics to our business. So to understand why they're so important, we're going over now to Richard Vaughan, director of our own retail dealers in the Mans of Saxon service workshop. Richard, Christian said he'd like to drive Vera next time he's here. Is she ready to go? She sure is, TT, but does Christian realize she's a right-hand drive? Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us here in the Mans of Saxon service yard. As you can see, we've future-proofed the yard by making it big enough for a Lexian 8900 with a 13.5 meter cutter bar to make a full 360 degree turn. And here is Vera's great granddaughter, our latest MANS service van. MANS today run more than 50 vans across their seven branches and every one of them represents a massive investment. The van, the service engineer's own toolbox, the class special tools, and the service engineer himself or herself, the chauffeur, cost man's over 100,000 per year. That's a total investment of over five million pounds across the whole business. We have also future-proofed our water supply. Under this yard is a 30,000 litre storage tank, so all the rain from the roof is used to wash the used machines as they come in. And we've done the same with our new workshops. Each of the nine service bays, wide enough to fit a Lexian, a Jaguar, or any other large machine, along with the service van side by side. They are also deep enough for the largest cutter bar which is really important to be able to refurbish the cutter bars over the winter months. Now moving into the service management office. We have designed this area for maximum visibility. From here, the service management team can see customers coming into the parts area and at the same time have full visibility of the service workshops. You can also see the team have full visibility of their service vans and all the class machines in their area through the remote service platform. Any machine that breaks down can be spotted immediately and we can start to diagnose any problems even before the customer phones in. This facility is so modern, Mans of Saxon have been chosen as our digital lighthouse dealer. So we will be testing a number of new digital tools here, such as our new dealer management system and our digital manager app in the near future. We want this workshop to be the cutting edge of modern technology. Now back to you, Trev. 
in the Technopark. Thank you, Richard. So we've heard a lot about the new buildings here at Saxon and how we will support our customers better in the future. But what do our employees think about all of these new changes? We're going over now to Oliver Holscher. It's his first day at work at Class UK. He's our new Chief Financial Officer, and he's been interviewing some of our employees to see what they think. Hello, Oliver. Thank you, Trevor. Yes, we've heard so many facts about the site now. As I'm new to the business, it is very important to me to get to know some employees and their stories, feelings about the new building. I'm sure they don't mind sharing them with you too. Emily, you are our marketing graduate management trainee. What do you like most about your job and the new building? I love my job. It's always changing, always evolving. Communication is essential in marketing and the new building has brought our department closer together. It's now a lot easier to make decisions with us all being on the same floor. It makes it a lot more personal. I look forward to seeing the customer experience improve, with customers being able to visit the new building and the new customer experience centre in the near future. You've been working for Class UK for 31 years, Scuddy. That is an incredible amount of time. How does that compare with your previous working environment? Yeah, when I first started we had like a big overhanger, which was the workshop. Mm bit dark to work in but we managed and got through in the times then they decided uh, that we'd have a new big workshop with all better conditions with like overhead crane better facilities for working in airlines mounted to the wall air pipes mounted to the wall a lot better environment mm -hmm. 10 big work and bays so we've got more room to work on so yeah very good very good now I'm wondering how the redeveloped site affects the service engineer apprentice program you're responsible for our apprenticeship program, aren't you? Does the new building have an impact on how you work with them? Yes, yeah, so I'm the apprenticeship and placement coordinator here at Class UK, based at Saxon. And we have about 90 apprentices on roll over the four-year program, which we offer land-based service engineering. So it's a lot better being here at Saxon in the new academy, because we're now allowed to bring our apprentices down throughout their apprenticeship for further training, as well as send them on block to their colleges. What is it like to work as a family for a family-owned company? Yes, yeah, so I'm based here in the academy where my brother and my father also work. And between us, we have over 50 years of experience at class here at Saxon. Um, from day one, the whole of the class of site here at Saxon make you feel like an extended family anyway. Our service employees will not be able to fix the machines without parts. I will talk to one of them. Adam, you have worked for Class as a spot storeman since 2010. What is it like to work in the new warehouse compared to the old one? We could hold so much more parts than we used to be able to, and it's all under one roof now. What has been um, the greatest improvement from your point of view? Uh, I would say the size of the building. Uh, coming from one building where we had a lot of outbuildings to having it all under one roof just means it's more efficient. I'm the CFO of COK, therefore it is obvious that I would like to know how my accounts team feel about the new building. You started working with class as an uh, accounts trainee in 2014, I believe. Yes, I did. Um, so I've been at class for six years now. Mm -hmm. uh, I started as a trainee, learning all about the finance department as well as other areas of the business. Uh, class put me through my accountancy exams as well, so I was studying those alongside working full-time here. I also know that you have spent some time working in Germany. Yeah, that was a great experience, learning more about the class group and how the businesses operate, and also a fantastic opportunity to work abroad for a year. How does a new working environment influence your team? It reflects quite nicely with what we're trying to do in the finance department at the moment. So um, we have some ongoing projects looking at modernising some of our finance processes. Um, so this new environment will um, reflect that quite nicely, I think. Class benefits from the exchange of employees, but this works both ways. And as well as giving employees the opportunity to work in Germany, Class UK also receives support from Hase Winkel. Randy, you are one of our 38 expatriates worldwide. How long have you been here 
And what do you do at Class UK? Hi, Oliver. My assignment started in April last year, and I will stay until September 2021, so two and a half years altogether. I'm the HR assistant. This role contains both administrative tasks, like processing starters and levers, and project work. What do you like most about Class UK and the redeveloped site? It's a pleasure to be part of the team. Everyone cares of each other. I do really appreciate this special team spirit. Building-wise, I like the open and bright atmosphere and my office most. I love the beautiful view over the fields. So from my point of view, living and working abroad is a positive challenge every day. Starting a new life out of my comfort zone does make me f feel more confident and stronger. I really enjoy talking to employees from various departments. It is such a pleasure to see how much they enjoy working for class in their new environment. Now it's back to Trevor in the Techno Park. Thank you, Oliver, and welcome uh, to the Class UK team, by the way. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm now standing in the new Mans of Saxon part shop, which is looking really fantastic. Uh, it's a new style shop, and a customer can come here for all his farming needs, whatever he requires. The shop supplies everything, and customers have a far greater choice. Uh, much more space as well to browse around whilst waiting to collect their spare parts. Behind this shop is a f the final and largest part of our new building. It's our brand new parts warehouse. And to tell us all about that, here's Brian Wayne again. Hello, Brian. Thank you, Trevor. Let me talk you through our new parts warehouse, which has been operational since April. To get here, our team loaded over 300 tonnes of stock just in a month ready for harvest, a process that they would normally do over winter. A huge thanks to everyone involved in the warehouse move. With over 4,000 square metres of storage space, we are now two and a half times bigger than our previous facility and expansion space is already factored in, ready for any future need we may have. We are far more efficient since we now have everything in this one building. We have barcode scanners and we have a much more friendly layout. Managing the stock of the warehouse are a team who look to maintain the right inventory levels at an average of five million pounds, usually enough to give us four months of supply whilst ensuring stock held allows us to fulfil our orders first time. During a typical day, our warehouse team can pick and pack over 600 parcels and during peak seasonal periods, this can reach weights of over 120 tonnes per day. Being close to a major road links as we are, this warehouse is ideally located to serve our UK and Ireland dealer network and their customers. We can deliver parts shipped from here directly to our dealers and with our newly extended parts facilities at Ham in Germany supporting us, we are able to supply parts in a fast and efficient manner next day. And during peak periods, it is not unusual for one of our dealers or their customers to travel here to collect parts on the same day. Of course, on site, Mans of Saxon are able to directly benefit from the stock available in our warehouse to serve the local customer base. In average, we deliver nearly 1,000 tonnes of parts in a year with a total value of £40 million. Back to you, Trevor. So that completes the tour of our new site here at Saxon. I'd now like to introduce Katrina Klaas Mulhäuser, who's come over from Germany to be with us today. Hello, Katrina. Hello, Trevor. So thank you for joining us. Uh, it's great to have you here. What are your first impressions of our new site at Saxon? It looks fabulous. I have to admit I had a sneak preview yesterday with my family and kids loved it. And the best thing was just happy faces. I mean, seriously, I saw the interviews uh, you led with the, inter uh, with the employees and I hope that when the first customers come that they will love it just as much. And yeah, it's absolutely amazing to me that they actually demolished the old buildings and rebuilt all this while <coughs> keeping up business 100%. And I think that's just amazing. So thanks, Katrina. Um, how important do you think it is today to be a family-owned company uh, in the agricultural machinery arena? 
Yeah, of course it's very important to me, but uh, I mean, family business definition to us is not just a business that is by coincidence owned by a family, but we try to um, treat everyone as part of the extended family, and that goes uh, for employees and also customers. And I think that we also have a special relationship with other family businesses because we think alike. I mean, we have a lot in common. And the main differentiator to other businesses being that we can think more long term. So we want long term relationships with our customers, <coughs> with our employees, and we also invest long term. So you can see it here. <laughs> So yeah, the long-term point I think leads perfectly to my next question, uh, which I know is on everyone's minds at the moment. How do you see the future, Katrina, especially in the UK with Brexit approaching? <laughs> Brexit, okay. Um, I don't want to get too political here, <laughs> but I think, um, well, first of all, agriculture and our industry in general has uh, proven to be quite resilient to the, to the COVID-19. Um, which I'm extremely happy about. And I think that long-term trends remain. Mm. Like uh, mm. the trend for, um, I mean, first of all, we have a growing world population and people want more higher quality food. They want uh, more meat in places. They want more local food. And I think um, maybe Brexit is even a chance. I mean, for, for the local food bit, for example. Mm. And class is 100 years old. We've been a long time here in Great Britain and in Ireland. And I think that, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just another hurdle. We'll be flexible, we'll overcome it, and we'll deal with it together. Yeah, thank you for those fascinating insights, Katrina. And one final question, if I may. Uh, where, what do you see as the greatest growth potential for class uh, looking into the mm. future? That, that's an easy one. <laughs> it's tractors. And yeah. I just joined, I mean, the, the shareholders committee in 2001. That was two years before we took over the tractor. And I think that since then, there hasn't been a single area in class where we have put so much energy into. We have renewed the whole product range. We have put new ranges on top of that. We have invested into the product and we've invested into production. For example, we feature a almost completely new factory in Le Mans now. And I think you can see that. And for example, the new uh, sort of top range model, the Axion 900 Teratrack, shows that we can not only lead in combine technology, but also in tractors. So Katrina, thank you once again for making the journey here today. Now, before you cut the ribbon, uh, mm -hmm. we'd like to just have a quick reminder of everything that we've seen here today at Saxon. And now I'd like to invite Katrina to perform the ribbon cutting ceremony to officially open the new Class UK and Mans of Saxon site. Thank you, Trevor. And with great pleasure, I declare these buildings officially open. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to extend a huge thank you to the team who put this great show together, especially the ladies on our opening committee, Randy, Lynn, Sandra and Emily, 
to Steve at UK Aerial Photography and to James and his team at JNPS Limited behind me uh, here today. Thank you everybody for joining us. It's been great showing you around and we really look forward to welcoming you here soon at Saxon. Bye bye for now.